Hi, I'm Bill Micas from Red Cloud. Today we're going to take a look at adding a panel to the system. Let's go into the software and take a look. Okay, in this brief demonstration, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add a Mercury panel to a Red Cloud system. I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in here. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to the physical access section. And from there, you can see the icons off to the left for doors, panels, areas, end of line resistance, etc. I'm going to go ahead and click on the panels section, which you can see there are no panels located in the system at this point. So I'm going to hit the plus sign or the add to add a panel to the system. This brings me to my main screen. First thing I have to do is give it a panel name. For me, I'm just going to call it um, my North Carolina demo panel. Its location is going to be in my demo room. And it automatically picked the appliance that I'm connected to, which is the Red Cloud Base appliance, as well as um, pick the vendor for the access control panel that I'm going to utilize, which is Mercury Security. Next, I'm just going to mark it installed. And then after that, I have to pick my model number. What type of panel is it? And in the model numbers, you'll see the new EP series panels. That's the current series panels that Mercury sells, EP 1501, 02, and 2500, as well as the legacy series panels, the SCP, SCPC, and E panels that they no longer uh, sell. So I'm going to pick EP 1502. That's the panel type that I have already pre-configured for this demonstration. You notice that I am in the America's time zone, so I don't need to adjust my time zone, but you could very easily do that uh, just by hitting the drop-down box. Um, next, there's the credentials, events, and database version. There's no need to adjust any of that. We do selective downloads to the panels, so there's really no need to increase the number of credentials going down to the panel um, unless advised to do so by our tech support team. I'm going to go ahead and hit save at this point. That's this little icon down in the corner there. That's going to bring me to my next screen. The next question that the system's basically asking me here is, what do I have connected on the RS-485 bus downstream on that EP-1502? Do I have a 16 input module, 16 output module, an MR-52 or two-door module, a keypad, maybe an MR-50 one-door module or a 51E? In my case, I have hardwired to mine one two-door controller or one MR-52 downstream. Again, I'm going to click in the corner here and hit my save button to save this configuration. At this point it's going to go ahead and build that panel out for me, adding that second uh, downstream panel to the to the system. Brings me back to my main configuration screen. You can see a few extra tabs up at the top there. I'm going to click on the host tab. That host tab then takes me to this screen where the only next step that I have to do to get this panel to come online is add the IP address. Now I've pre-configured my panel with IP address 192.168.1.18 so that is panel 18. In there you also see reply timeout, offline timeout, retries, and poll delay. You don't need to adjust any of these. You can uh, you know, disrupt the communications capabilities on the panel if you do make any adjustments there. These are there for if you have a problem with communications and you're advised to make changes to this by your tech support team or by our tech support team, uh, you would make those changes at that time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. It's going to bring me back to my main screen, and you'll see the panel briefly uh, come online, all green. So it, we know it's communicating. The comms, power, tamper, and battery are all in green, so I know it's communicating. My next step is to then click on the panel name. You can see that the panel ID has a mismatch to it. So my next step is going to go in here, click on firmware. That's going to open up the firmware screen. I'm going to choose the appropriate firmware for the panel that I'm downloading to. In my case, it's an EP1502, and I want to download the latest firmware. So that's the firmware with the highest number. So we have 111.5, 110.7. So the highest number is 114.8. So I'm going to go over here to the green check mark where it says Apply Firmware. I'm going to click Apply Firmware. It gives me a message that says, Are you sure you want to do this? Absolutely. I'm going to say OK. Takes me back to the main screen, and now I get a message up here in this section that says firmware download in progress. 
Okay, so now my panel is down, uh, finished downloading the firmware to the panel, and that typically takes anywhere from one to three minutes for that to happen. Uh, but you can still see that I do have a panel ID mismatch, and the reason for that is because this panel in particular was connected to a another system previously and it still has its last known database in it so now my next step is going to be to go in and hit the reset download the most important thing here is to remember that as part of the process regardless of whether this is a brand new panel out of the box or whether it's a panel that you got off the shelf that was being utilized someplace else you still need to download the firmware and do a reset download to the panel regardless of whether or not you see that re, uh, panel ID mismatch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the reset download. It's going to ask, tell me that it was successful. I'm going to say OK. The panel's going to go offline briefly. It's going to go ahead and start doing, come back online and it's going to start doing a download to the panel. And we'll see a message show up in the window that says parameter download in progress. Now my panel's finished downloading and you can see that the message has gone away for the panel ID mismatch and now I'm ready to go on to my next step. The next step here is you can see that my main panel and its internal sub panel which is sub panel 0 is online and all green however my downstream panel that additional two door panel or MR52 is not. I need to get that online so I just go over here to the sub panels tab I'm going to go ahead and click on the sub panels tab and if I look over here in this section where it says uh, installed, you'll notice it says no for that sub panel. I'm going to change that no to a yes by simply clicking on it. If I go back to my status tab, I can see that that panel is now online. And that is it. I'm all done downloading and adding my panel to the Red Cloud system.